Hello, I'm Olivia. In this lesson, we're going to do the first exercise of our course, which consists of creating a BPMN diagram. So, let's go! For this exercise, let's imagine that we're a company that provides services. Our salespeople receive requests from clients or prospects, and after approval of the quotation, the technical team steps in to deliver the service. So the sequence of facts would be exactly as follows. The client calls sales and asks for a quotation. The sales team then records the need, draws up a quotation, and sends it to the client for approval. Then, the client approves the quotation. Upon approval, the opportunity generates a service order for the technical team. A technician provides the service, and after the service is completed, the client receives a satisfaction survey. Note that this is a primary process, as it creates value for the client. In fact, the client has constant participation in the process. It is they who initiate, approve, and evaluate the service. From an internal point of view, we can also see different teams and departments working together to provide the service to the client. Ultimately, the process starts with a client demand and ends with value delivery. This kind of process is called end-to-end -end process. Now let's start creating the diagram. Okay, inside Heflo's process editor, click the plus icon. In the new process dialog, select BPMN. To name the process, we'll use a typical end-to-end -end process name. Click to confirm. This is the diagram design area. On the left are the BPMN elements that you can drag into the drawing area. And the first element to be inserted is the pool. Note the process name on the pool label. In our lesson on pools, you'll learn the meaning of that name. Now in each pool lane, we need to define the responsibilities. The first lane will be sales. To rename it, just click on the text and start typing. You can also edit this from the Properties tab, which is located to the right of the editor. Avoid assigning specific names of people to the lanes. Always define responsibilities according to a role within the organization, which can be a team, a position, a department, and so on. For the second lane, I'll use the term Service Delivery Team. Now add a start event, which is an element that determines how the process starts. Here in Heflo, the start events are always in this toolbar item. OK, now add a simple start event. Notice that the start event does not have a trigger. This means that the process must be started manually. Also note that I've added the start event to the sales team's lane. It means that, in this version, the sales team will be responsible for initiating the process, probably when they receive a call. When naming the event, we should use a best practice, which is to use a noun and a verb in the past tense. In this case, client called. Keep in mind that this is a simplified initial version of the process. Later, we will add client participation via the relationship portal. After the start event, we need to include the first process task, which in this case will be to prepare the quotation. To do this, simply select the event and pull this task icon in. Notice that the task is already connected to the start event through a sequence flow. When labeling the task, we will also use a best practice. In this case, the suggestion is to use a verb followed by a noun. In other words, create quotation. 
If you need to add more information, use the documentation field that is located here on the Properties tab. This is the documentation dialog. Note that it's possible to format text, include links, and even videos. If you're a user of the HEFLO portal, where the process is published, you will be able to see the documentation with all the multimedia features you enter here. Then add the Send Quotation task. Another best practice concerns the diagram layout. Ideally, we should always place elements from left to right. This allows the sequence of tasks to be viewed in a timeline. After client approval, we need to insert a deviation in the diagram. At this point, the client can refuse the quotation. If that is the case, the process will be finished, or they can accept the quotation, and the process goes on to the technical area. To represent the deviation, we will use this element, called a gateway. There are several types of deviations, and in our case, we'll use this one, the exclusive gateway. The exclusive gateway indicates that the flow will be diverted to only one of the output paths. For the end event label, the best practice advises to use a text that describes the final situation of the process. In this case, quotation refused. If it's approved, the request will go on to the technical team, where there will be a task called Provide Service. Now add the Send Report and Survey task. Then the process goes straight to the end. Add an element with this red background and thick border. Service Provided. For the exclusive gateway, the recommendation is to put a question on the label. And in the output flows, indicate the answers to this question. To edit this label, simply click on the ABC icon and enter the new value. So that's our process. In the next lessons, it will evolve with the insertion of new elements. And when we approach the end of the course, this process will be used as the theme of our course completion project. Thank you.